Corey McKegg, a 23-year-old Air Force Regiment member, disappeared during a night out with friends on September 23, 2016. It is suspected that he might have died in a lorry bin, but his corpse has still not been found to date. Corey McKegg was born in September 1993 in Perth, Scotland, and grew up in Cuppar, Fife. At the age of nine, his parents got divorced, and he moved to Dunfermline, Fife, with his mother and two brothers, Derek and McKeon. He joined the RAF regiment in 2013, and after training, he served as a senior aircraftman gunner and medic on No. 2 Squadron, Royal Air Force Regiment, based at Honington. On September 23, 2016, Corey visited Barry St. Edmunds, Suffolk with his friends. He wore a pink Ralph Lauren shirt, white trousers, and Timberland shoes. He left his friends at Flax Nightclub on St. Andrew Street South, and later went to Mamma Mia Restaurant. Corey left his base, RAF Honington, at around 10 p.m. and spent the evening in local pubs before going on to a club. Corey was reported missing on Monday, September 26, 2016, when he didn't join his duty. Due to a weekend on the 24th and 25th, nobody noticed his absence. The police issued the first public appeal to gather information about Corey. The Suffolk Lowland Search and Rescue Team, Sulsar, joined the police to search for Corey in the Barry St. Edmunds and Honington areas. They worked with the RAF search and rescue teams, which were supported by police helicopters. The last authenticated sighting of Corey was captured on CCTV at Brent Govel Street at 3.25 a.m. on the 23rd of September 2013. He was walking into the horseshoe area with multiple bins. The footage also captured Corey taking a nap there before moving ahead. However, he didn't return to his base, which was 10 miles northeast of the town. The police traced the location of Corey's mobile phone, which indicated that he went from Barry St. Edmunds to Barton Mills on the morning he disappeared. This journey was about 12 miles, and it took 28 minutes, according to the movement of the phone's signal. However, it was impossible to cover that distance in such a short time on foot, so police assumed that Corey might be carried in one of the lorry bins. The police searched the area, but Corey's phone was not found. Corey's mother, Nicola, and his brothers went to a police conference to appeal. The police appealed to the public to share information about Corey's. The police also investigated the Hollow Road Industrial Estate in Barry St. Edmunds in Great Livermere, a small village near RAF Honington. The Suffolk Constabulary and the British Transport Police searched the railway lines and closed some roads for detailed investigation. On October 10, 2016, a broken and burned corpse was discovered in a suitcase near the A628 Road, close to Tint Whistle in Derbyshire. But after a DNA test, Derbyshire Constabulary confirmed it wasn't Corey. On October 20, 2016, Nicola appeared on TV show, seeking more details about her son. We will find him. We will find him one day. It's, it's just not an option not to. She repeats her belief that Corey is alive, mentioning three possibilities. A bad accident, going with a stranger, or getting a lift to the wrong spot. On November 8, 2016, police shut down one lane of the A14 east of Barry St. Edmunds to search Corey. In the same month, the police released the images of 39 people captured on the same CCTV footage on the day Corey disappeared. 23 of these people remained unknown. Suffolk Constabulary requested them to come forward if they had any clue or information. On December 17, 2016, Nicola arranged the first public search for Corey between RAF Honington and Barton Mills. About 30 volunteers and roughly 60 members of the Solsar search team joined. They searched through five square miles of the landfill area. In the same month, Nicola announced that the authorities were not investigating this case efficiently. She even hired a private investigator. The authorities defended her actions and stated, We are very focused on finding Corey. Although it is a missing person inquiry, we have given it the same resources as a major investigation. We have not ruled out any possibility. A few days later, surprising news came forward. April Oliver, a 21-year-old from Norfolk, was revealed to be Corey's girlfriend, and she was pregnant. The pair had been together for about five months before Corey went missing. On January 22, 2017, another landfill search for Corey around Barton Mills was carried out and 140 volunteers joined for help. The same month, the police found a broken mobile phone from the last location of Corey's phone, but missing SIM card and other parts could confirm its identification, so no further investigation was done. However, they decided to investigate Corey's social media profiles. In February 2017, police searched a landfill where Corey's phone last connected to a tower. They believed he might have slept in a bin at the horseshoe area and was accidentally taken away in a bin lorry and then crushed to death. Corey's family disagreed, saying he was conscious about his appearance and would never sleep at such a place. 
The search covered 1,100 square yards to a depth of 25 feet and was expected to last 10 weeks. The police searched through thousands of tons of waste, but didn't find Corey. By May 2017, Suffolk Police searched through 3,000 tons of waste, making it one of the most expensive missing person investigations they've handled. The police revealed that there was an error in calculating the bin lorry's weight earlier. The actual weight of the lorry was approximately 220 pounds, 100 kilograms. On July 21st, 2017, the landfill search ended with no signs of Corey. The police planned to review the investigation. In August 2017, the police searched through the burned waste that was transferred from the landfill site. Some bones were found, but later it was confirmed that they did not belong to humans. In October 2017, Suffolk planned to search for a second time at the Milton Landfill in Cambridgeshire, focusing on an area with waste around the time Corey went missing. A review by a specialized police unit supported the assumption that Corey might have died in the landfill after getting into a bin in Barrie St. Edmunds. By March 26, 2018, Suffolk police stopped searching, saying there were no more important leads. Corey's family appeared on a show, Victoria Derbyshire, to point out inconsistencies in the police records about the bin lorry's weight. In April 2018, Corey's father accepted his son's death and aimed to arrange a memorial. Meanwhile, Nicola highlighted that the authorities have not issued a death certificate, as Corey was still officially missing. A retired senior Metropolitan Police detective, Colin Sutton, mentioned that Corey's disappearance was not intentional, as preparing to disappear usually leaves digital traces. Colin speculated that someone else might have been involved in Corey's disappearance. I don't think he would have had the knowledge as to where all the cameras were situated to avoid them on purpose. Uh, so that really plays into another kind of theory around how did he come out of this cul-de-sac? Was it in a vehicle that left here? Or indeed, did he you know, climb over these walls and these, the, these buildings. Furthermore, Corey's bank and social media accounts were not used after he disappeared. Nicola revealed limitations in the CCTV footage's timeline, suggesting Corey could have left after the camera stopped recording. In October 2018, Suffolk police analyzed bin weights and found that the bins load on the day of Corey's disappearance exceeded typical weights. Between January 2016 and February 2017, the bin usually weighed between 44 to 66 pounds. But on September 24, 2016, it weighed around 256 pounds. This led the police to believe Corey was inside that day and died in the landfill at Milton. In November 2020, the family requested a final inquiry and hearing into Corey's death. It began on March 7, 2022, at Suffolk Coroner's Court in Ipswich and ended on March 22, 2022. It concluded that Corey had died after getting into a commercial waste bin, which was then emptied into a waste lorry. The jury's narrative conclusion stated that he died around 4.20 a.m. on September 24, 2016, in Barry St. Edmunds due to compression asphyxia in association with multiple injuries. Alcohol consumption was also pointed out as a reason to distract Corey's judgment and contribute to his death.